Hello and welcome to another episode of RC Printer. I'm your host Jordan Visco and today we are playing around with this guy right here which is our RC jet boat. So with this guy we had a little bit of trouble right off the bat when we ran it. This is a little C3530 uh, brushless uncensored motor and the initial one we had installed was 1400 kV and it blew within the first minute or two of runtime. and I'm not entirely certain why that is. It could have been a few things. First of all uh, it could just be too small of a motor to push this boat around. Another issue might be that I think the first drive shaft that I built for this thing wasn't perfect. So I've rebuilt the drive shaft and I'm much more comfortable with how this one's spinning. Um, so we'll give that a shot as well. Now also because that first motor did get so hot, this uh, center motor mount here, it's built out of PLA and it actually warped a tiny bit. Um, so what we're going to try doing is installing one of these, which is a new motor mount plate that I can put in between the motor and this motor plate here. And that should stop any warping because this is printed out of ABS. So the melting temperature is much, much higher. And then we've also installed this flexible motor coupler here. So if the motor and the drive shaft aren't perfectly aligned, that will help uh, reduce a little bit of stress on the motor as well. Now also this new C3530 motor is 1100 kV instead of the 1400 kV that we were using originally. So that should help reduce the heat a little bit as well. It might have a slightly slower top speed, but if we're burning the motor out, that's just something we're gonna have to put up with. So now, depending on how hot this motor gets, we have a few different other uh, motors to try. I have one of these really cheap 540 uh, brushless uncensored uh, waterproof motors and just being a larger motor uh, hopefully it doesn't get quite as hot. Unfortunately this one is a 4370 kV so it's a pretty fast motor so we'll have to see how that goes. And then another thing I wanted to try was one of these D series motors. I have this D3542 motor here that I'm trying to modify. Um, in order to get it to work in the boat. So depending on how those other two motors go, I'd like to give this one a shot as well and just see what kind of performance we can get out of this one. It should do pretty well on a uh, 3S and even a 4S LiPo, so we'll see. Now the motor burnout that we did have on this happened on a 3S LiPo, so I'd like to try a 2S as well and see what the performance is like and see how hot it gets. And then we'll up it to 3S and just see what the temperature looks like after runtime for a few minutes. So we're going to try and do as much of the initial testing here as possible at home. So we're going to run upstairs to the bathroom, fill up the tub, and see how it goes. Alright, here we go with our C3530 1100KV uh, with a 2S LiPo. We'll run it for a minute or two and see how hot it gets. So it's starting to get a little warm there after about a minute and a half. Okay, so that's about two minutes of runtime, and we'll just check the temperature. So we're running about 110 right now. Let's give it another 30 seconds or so. So right at 120, 122, as the casing heats up here, it'll get a little hotter. 124, there we go, 125, so it's, it's warming up. So we're definitely reaching that point where um, we're going to get a little bit worried about how hot she's getting. Oh, now it says 150. So that's about the max we really want to put through it. So even on a 2S LiPo, I can definitely burn this motor out. I'm definitely putting a lot of strain on the motor, uh, having the throttle at 100% and then also holding it in place. Um, so there's quite a lot of work that's happening on that prop and on that drive shaft and on that motor. So it's not exactly like real world. I could probably get away with running a 2S LiPo, I would guess, on this thing for quite a while. If it was in a lake or in a regular running situation where I wasn't holding the throttle at 100% the entire time. But let's go ahead and we'll try that 540 motor and we'll see how well it does. Okay, here we are back with a 540 brushless motor and we'll see how it goes. So the motor definitely wants to run real fast. I'd say it's definitely too high of a KV for this little guy, especially in the bathtub here. It just wants to take off. So I can already tell it's getting hot. There's just way too much strain on it in the bathtub here. If we want to really test this out, we're going to have to get out onto the lake and give it a try in more of a wide open space. Because yeah, that's real hot already. We're already about 115. 125, 135, so there's just another 30 seconds or so of running it. I'm sure I can get this motor too hot. Definitely isn't going to take 3S LiPo, especially in the bathtub. I'm interested to try our third motor, 
So we'll go give that a shot now. Okay, here we go again. Uh, this time we have the D3542 motor. It's an outrunner, it's 1450 kV, and this is the one I'm most excited about, so hopefully it works. So it's definitely got more power than any of the other uh, motors I've tried before. And I think my 2S battery here is dying, so I'm going to jump right up to 3S and see how it goes. On 3S I can't even hold it back. I had to modify the motor in order to get it to work and you can see here the motor casing is actually starting to slide off so uh, I'm gonna have to go fix that before we keep going. Okay so we got our D3452 back in there and I've been running it for about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, unfortunately I didn't get it on video but Right now our motor is at just over 100 degrees, so it's doing pretty well. It's definitely far more powerful than any of the other motors that I tried, and I'm really happy with the performance on it. I'm gonna give it a go for another 30 seconds or so here and see how hot we can get this motor to go. So the temperature's actually gone down. We're only at 100 right now. I think we can safely say this one's gonna work with a ton of load. And I can also put a 4S LiPo in there if I want to go faster, but I have a feeling uh, 3S is going to be about the max before it's going to start cavitating too much. All right, we're just finished now with our RC jet boat. And before we head out there and give it a test on open water, I just wanted to show you a couple of the last minute modifications I made. Um, I 3D printed a little TPU seal around the edge here. So now when the cover goes on top, Hopefully we're not going to get any water in there. Originally when I tested this thing, I was actually getting a lot of water in here through the drive shaft. And so I filled up the space between the bearings in there with some PTFE loop and hopefully that helps. Uh, when I was testing in the bat bathtub there, I wasn't getting any leakage uh, from the drive shaft. So that's great. And I think we're good there. And then the last place I was getting a bunch of water in is actually right back here where the uh, servo rod goes through the hull and so I 3D printed out of TPU as well a little seal for there. I was going to glue it in but it seems to be holding in quite nicely and uh, the servo rod can move back and forth fairly smoothly there. Also I went and upgraded our speed controller. Previously I was just testing with a little 30 amp speed controller and it was getting quite hot so I've upgraded to this 120 amp PSC here. So I think that should be just about it. We got all our wires organized so I can't wait to get it out there and try it out. All right, here we are at the beautiful Shushwap Lake to test out our new motor on our RC jet boat. You can see we've got it here and you can see the water level is super low right now, especially if I look up at the beach here. And if I look into the water there, you can see we've only got about a foot or two of water. So basically the perfect conditions here for a jet boat. We're not going to hit anything with our propeller, which is awesome. So there's the inside of the jet boat. We're going to run a 3S 1500 milliamp hour battery uh, to start with. See how that goes. We got our D3542 1450 kV motor in there and I'm really excited to get it out and see how fast we can go. All right, in the water we go. There it goes.
All right, so, so far, loving how quickly this thing turns, loving the motor, it seems to be doing really well. It's really, really good, super, super fun to drive. I'm gonna give it a run for a little bit further and then we'll uh, open her up and see how much water we get inside. Let's see how fast we can get it going. <laughs> Oh man, wow, there is not a drop of water inside there. That's awesome. Looks, looks like my waterproofing worked wonderfully. I am noticing for some reason here the speed controller fan is not engaging, so that's not great. It's warm, but it's not ridiculously hot. Ooh, the motor itself is pretty hot. So I think we'll, uh, we'll turn it off and give it a moment to rest here. All right, here we are testing again with the 5,000 milliamp our battery, it's much bigger, much heavier, and I'm interested to see how it does with a little bit more weight. No problem. Man, it's fun to drive. It turns on a dime. Oh, so we got the cavitate there. No problem. Back in the game. Foxy's real nervous here. She wants to go eat it. Sorry, dog. You can see something is uh, something's cooking in there. Ooh, that motor's that motor's real hot. Definitely glad I put that ABS uh, motor mount on there. The speed controller is a bit hot, but not too bad. So I guess the last thing I'd really like to do for this is just add some cooling. There's a couple ways to do that. One would be a water-cooled motor mount that can attach to the outrunner motor here. And that would help somewhat for sure. And then another way would be to drill out this scoop here. You are then going to get a little bit of extra water inside, but that might actually be worth it. Because there's no two ways about it, that sealed chamber is going to generate a lot of heat if you're going to run on a 3S or above. So unless you're running 2S, you're definitely going to want some sort of a cooling in here long term. That said, I'm super pleased with my RC jet boat. It's extremely fun to drive. I recommend you build one as well. Oh, there goes a school of fish. So take it easy and remember as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects like this one to build, kits, parts, instructions how to build them, check us out at our website, www.rcprinter.com. Thanks a lot.